I play a decent amount of video games and I am a fan of a lot of video games and a lot of video game series. And even though I love things like Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog, the only video game series that I would actually say is important to me is the Animal Crossing series. And please hear me out. The Animal Crossing series is one of the only series that I've been able to follow since the beginning. Part of that's because of my age, and another part of that is because I really don't get involved with the video game series, at least until a couple of iterations in. But when I look back at my relationship to the Animal Crossing series, it's kind of interesting because it illustrates my relation to not only the game series, but as the medium of video games as a whole. When the first Animal Crossing came out, I was just getting my feet wet in the water of the whole medium, and it really helped me get into that water full on. Uh, when Animal Crossing Wild World came out, I was full on into video games, and it really was just everything I wanted to do from when I got up to when I went to sleep. And Animal Crossing City Folk came out at a time where I thought I was gonna get out of gaming, but I eventually went back in. And part of that is because of my relationship to Animal Crossing New Leaf. When New Leaf came out, well, if you look back at my channel, you can kind of get a semblance of my history here on YouTube. I had another channel before this one and I decided to get rid of it and move to this channel because I wanted to change direction. However, when I got to this channel, I wanted to be more focused on production and making things that I was proud of. And I don't know how it led into it, but I was making a couple shorts at the time and eventually I decided to do game hunting videos based largely off of the game chasers. However, those required me to move around and to spend money and to film them and edit them and even though they didn't take as much effort as my videos do now, it required a lot of physical effort on my part and that wasn't really possible because... I've actually figured out some things that we didn't know before. Um, I'm battling with a type of bone cancer called Osteriosacoma. Um, but, yeah, it kind of sucks, because the only thing I really care about is I've been involved in some things recently, and I've wanted to get more back into video production, but I haven't been able to do that. Even though this is something that still affects me, both physically and mentally to this day, this isn't really something I like to talk about on YouTube. If people come up to me and ask me about it in real life, I will gladly talk about it and answer any questions they have in the most personal way. But here on YouTube, I really don't think it's important to what I want to do here. Currently, my main focus on YouTube is talking about video games, and even though that's not what my end goal is with video production, it's what I'm currently aiming to do and succeed at in the moment. And talking about something personal like this doesn't really help that, if that makes any sense. Because of this, and because I was on chemotherapy, and because I was, you know, essentially had a useless leg in the moment, I went from making videos out and about my town, hunting for retro video games, to making videos in my room, and that led me to make Sonic the Hedgehog my top 10 what the fuck Sonic the Hedgehog moments, which got featured on Screw Attack and ended up blowing up. As of now, it has like 1.5 million views. So essentially, the direction I'm in on YouTube now is because of this. I started chemotherapy in October of 2012, had my surgery for my leg in January of 2013, and was scheduled to finish chemotherapy in May of 2013. However, a few things delayed that. Primarily, one time after coming home after receiving chemo, I got a fever. And when you get a fever when you're on chemo, you have to go back to the hospital because basically chemotherapy kills your immune system. So something like a fever, if you don't pay attention to it, can actually kill you. So I went back to the hospital and I ended up getting a bunch of mouth sores in my throat and down in my mouth. And I the fever came and went. And because of that, they had to take me off of chemo chemotherapy to raise my immune system back up and I was in the hospital for about two to three weeks which delayed my finish date for chemotherapy. My finish date for chemotherapy went from the middle of May to the end of June and also at the same time a lot of my friends had who were a year above me ended up going to college and because of that a big part of my support system was gone aside from my family who always supported me from beginning to end. As I said before, the Animal Crossing series is something that I've been playing since the beginning, and I knew a new one was coming out. 
it was the only game I was actually excited for when the 3DS was announced, and that was three years prior to this. So I was talking to my parents about it for a week straight when it was going to come out. And so one day when my mom was out on a Sunday, she actually picked me up the game without me having to ask. She knew a lot of my friends had left and I was anxious to be done with the treatments, so I never had to. She just wanted me to have something to keep my mind off all of the crap around me. So for the last two rounds of chemotherapy in June of 2013, I had Animal Crossing with me. And the kind of drugs I was on towards the end of my therapy required a four-hour drip of the drug. And then you had to flush it out of your system over the course of three or four days. So naturally, my mind was on the game. It wasn't on the sterile hospital room around me. For those of you who may not know, Animal Crossing is a very casual series. There is no goal, no winning, just living. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, the latest iteration as of this date, you're a new citizen moving into a town with a completely randomized map, so no two players have the same town, and you're actually mistaken to be the mayor in the new version, so you end up taking all the responsibilities of the mayor, picking up town projects and making sure your town, which is kind of sterile when you get there, and making it turn into something vibrant and full of life. You name your town, you move into a house, and you get a debt to pay off. You meet tons of new villagers that are all different kinds of animals with all unique and distinct personalities. The debt you have to pay off isn't even mandatory, but if you choose to do it, you can expand your house, which you could decorate with all sorts of furniture, which you buy by earning money. And you can earn money by fishing, catching bugs, playing the stock market, growing certain kinds of fruit in your town. The possibilities to a new player are seemingly endless. As I said, a lot of my friends had left for college and a lot of the friends that I still had weren't able to drive to the hospital to see me because I was a few towns over. So I was actually able to play my game and interact with my friends who weren't able to come visit me over, <laughs> over the internet. The game is both relaxing and engaging and that's kind of a hard mix to do. It distracted me from what was happening and gave me a form of escapism. Video games are a form of escapism, and I have certainly used them as such. Whether I was having a bad day at school, or feeling lonely as a kid or a teenager, no other form of media can let you experience something else besides a video game. When I'd use it to escape then, however, it wasn't something I needed, it was just a way to distract me from crap that every single kid goes through. But here, it was a way to forget the nausea, the fatigue, the drugs I was on. When I was in the hospital, if people weren't around or asleep, I'd kind of take advantage, albeit within the rules set, of the drugs they could give me. I'd often ask for a double dose of lorazepam and Benadryl to knock me out, and oh man, did it work. But Animal Crossing deterred me from doing so. When visitors would leave or my parents would go to sleep, I wouldn't want to be knocked out. But I I'd want to be, you know playing around my fictional town and doing stupid chores for my fictional villagers. I have a lot of memories playing video games and of particular moments in video games, but usually the two don't line up. I don't remember a particular event in a video game in congruence with a real life event. But when I was told I was clear to go home after my last round of chemo, I wasn't in a hospital room, but I was fishing on Tortimer's Island in Animal Crossing New Leaf. That summer, I had to do physical therapy, start working on all the school I missed, all while still feeling the fatigue from chemotherapy. I had family and friends for moral support, but between it all and the quiet moments, late at night, because of the temporary insomnia created by all the drugs I was on, I was playing Animal Crossing, escaping from the storm around me into my little town of bootleg. As somebody who wants to create content, and somebody who does create content, uh, occasionally I'll get a message saying that, my videos and my story telling my cancer way back when has inspired people and made people feel happy. And it's funny because I never thought that the kind of content I could create could do something like that. And even though it's on a very small scale, it helps somebody. And I don't think about that when I'm creating something. And Animal Crossing is definitely not a series that feels like it was created to help people get through difficult times. But when you're going through difficult times, you cling on to things that you don't think would be important to you and Animal Crossing New Leaf went from this series of games that I would play almost religiously after school in order to forget about homework to something I used to help me get through the most difficult time of my life.